Hello everyone how are you all my name is Kumari Pooja and I am here again to discuss about legal updates uh, i hope you are aware that we have a series that is going on with regard to legal updates that are important for your uh, upcoming clat examination uh i also hope that you have gone through my previous uh, videos on legal updates because it all contains very important uh, legal developments that are uh, happening around us and that may become one of the uh, you know centers of the passage that you get in clat in order to avoid any surprise element yes so there are uh, there are instances in the mock test when students uh, seem to have a setback when they uh, come through some uh, uh, new unfamiliar kind of passages and they are entirely bewildered as to how are they supposed to approach it how are they supposed to tackle it so it's always better that you know you be prepared uh, beforehand uh, uh, for such passages first of all uh, it's it's a different dimension to take care of that you know you should first of all uh, develop a skill to snatch out certain principle from the passage that is given but it becomes a bit easier for you to snatch out those principles if you are aware of the legal updates yes and that is why we are here to study about the legal updates we we'll discuss certain uh, updates for today and uh, first and foremost is about the mediation bill uh, i hope you would have heard or at least studied about alternative dispute resolution yes first of all when we talk about the dispute resolution in india mostly we follow litigation yes but if you go to say usa or european countries then you would see that there is a shift a major major shift from the adr to, uh, sorry from the litigation to adr means alternative dispute resolution as the word suggests these are the alternatives to the litigation for resolving any dispute okay so for that we uh, so far we had uh, arbitration and conciliation act but apart from that now uh, there is a bill that has been uh, that has come into picture that talks about mediation per se okay so we have several kind of uh, alternative dispute resolution like for example we have arbitration we have negotiation we have mediation we have conciliation apart from litigation litigation is the uh, hard core uh, dispute resolution system right now for arbitration we had arbitration and conciliation more or less we had uh, a separate statute for mediation we did not have a separate statute most of it uh, we got it mostly from the arbitration and conciliation and certain judgments right so now uh, uh, we can see that there is some bill that is going on yeah that's into the picture that's on the surface and uh, it basically talks about giving certain importance to mediation as well especially in online forums or mediation in a form of community yes so wherein an entire community can come and they can come uh, on the platform and they both and the both the parties can mediate okay act this bill also talks about the enforcement of these agreements so uh, what has been the situation so far is that for mediation when there is any settlement agreement that is reached by both the parties okay that is not enforceable in nature and that makes the mediation process a bit weaker okay thoda kamzor ho jata hai right agar if we cannot enforce it legally it it doesn't hold a lot of value only when it has an enforcement value its importance increases right fir hum usko value dete hain that's why we follow litigation because once the order once the enforcement order has been done enforce court ne order de diya it has to be enforced right so there is no no to it so that is not what was the case in case of mediation so far and that is why the bill has been introduced for uh, for getting these kind of uh, uh, you know enforcement provisions and uh, a bit of expansion of the mediation now what all are the important uh, uh, pointers here bill also introduces that uh, all the civil and commercial dispute they all should be uh, directed towards the mediation at the very first place though uh, for now um, 
there there are certain judgments there are certain courts okay wherein what is happening is most of the commercial disputes okay so there are certain set of commercial dispute that is being directed towards arbitration aram se for on the very first in, instance itself okay the, the moment the matter comes to the court court looks at the uh, matter directly us ko divert karte hain arbitration ki taraf so now the bill is proposing that it, there are there should be certain civil and commercial dispute that shall be directed towards mediation also up say okay wherein you can think that both the parties there can be mediation that can happen between both the parties and uh, uh, the information here should be entirely confidential and the entire process should be completed over uh, the period of 180 days usse zyada nahi lagna chahiye just in case if party needs it we should give an extension maximum to 180 days okay similar is the provision for the arbitration as well now who would appoint these mediators there are two ways first of all either parties can choose as to who they want to appoint mediator as okay and second one is there would be mediator service centers so they can also uh, provide certain mediators all right same as with arbitration as well parties can choose if parties have not chosen so far courts can choose if there is if, uh, agar court ko bhi nahi aa raha hai samajh mein to in that case there are certain institutions for uh, the arbitration those organization they actually have the uh, arbitration and they then choose it if a person if the parties go to some uh, arbitration centers arbitration organization to get Uh, a matter dissolved they have a pool of arbitrators and they would appoint anybody out of them okay so this is how it has been happening now here there is one more uh, important uh, aspect that uh, i want you all to know and that is about the difference between mediation arbitration and litigation okay this will maybe give you a clear picture a better picture about uh, how is it all functioning hai na kaise ho raha hai how is it happening and what all are the differences what is the real picture of it yes so it will give you a, a better picture about it and it will help you in understanding uh, all these concepts and maybe if you get any passage on any of these topics or any of uh, in on any lines of these topics with any dimension it will be easier for you to comprehend those topics if you are aware of this okay first of all uh, starting with how is the matter taken it's all voluntary okay it's not like if i'm a mediator maine dekha ki mere ghar ke paas mein koi commercial dispute chal raha hai i simply go and tell them listen i'm going to mediate please come okay i cannot do that i cannot uh, start that only the parties have to start that it's the party who has to voluntarily come to either mediator or arbitrator or litigator or basically courts okay it's the party either of the party that will approach uh, one of them to get their dispute result apart from that it's about more about the uh, contract also when we talk about arbitration most of the commercial uh, contracts now you would see there would always be a, an arbitral uh, uh, provision okay they always have a clause for arbitration so if the arbitration clause mentions certain you know uh, they, they may have certain choices as to where do they want to sit right where do they want to have their arbitration how many arbitrators do they want to have or say you know uh, how, uh, how what sort of procedure do they want to follow so they can uh, have their own thing and they can uh, decide as to which juris- jurisdiction which law are they going to follow and they can mention it in the contract so whatever would be mentioned in the contract that is going to be followed just in case if there is no such mention in the contract in that case of course the land law that is our uh, law of land that is arbitration conciliation act that is what uh, would be followed but there is nothing as such in mediation okay in arbitration it is binding but in mediation it's not binding as such it's not enforceable as such until unless it is mentioned in the contract one it is once it is mentioned in the contract that we are all going to get into mediation in case of any dispute okay in that case only uh, it is going to be enforceable talking about litigation isme to bolne ki baat hi nahi hai yes it is binding yes and not just binding uske upar we can in fact go for appeals also yeah so litigation to uh, of course is a hard court thing apart from that 
mediator and arbitrator, they are all uh, appointed by the parties for the decision, but we cannot choose the judge in the court. Right? We, can we can we go and say that uh, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur is my favorite judge, so I want to want him to hear my matter? I cannot do that. Yes. Apart from that, when we talk about the formalities, okay, litigation is much more formal. You need to be very formal. Arbitration was su not supposed to be very formal. It was supposed to be a little informal, uh, sorry, informal. But uh, now, after a lot of practice, it has become a bit uh, formal in nature okay and mediation is informal mediation is easy breezy kind of then uh, for arbitration there are certain rules of course we have a set of laws right arbitration and conciliation act there are a set of laws that has to be adhered by both the parties by the arbitrators right and for litigation also we have set of procedural law cpc crpc right i hope you are aware of it that we have those procedural law and that is how uh, the court is supposed to follow i mean those are the laws the courts follows in order to get to the dispute resolution but when we talk about mediation there is no such set rules for uh, guiding as to how to mediate okay now for arbitration uh, it's uh, if a decision has been taken it has to be imposed if in court in litigation if a decision has been taken it has to be imposed but in mediation it is going to be decided by both the parties whether they are going to follow it or not okay so mostly what will happen suppose me and you get into a mediation okay and Later on, I don't want to follow the, uh, suppose we got into an agreement, later on I found it, that no, agreement is not my job, I'm not uh, satisfied with it, so I'm not going to follow it. So since it's I, I decided that I don't want to follow it, I can simply back off. Yes, so there is no mutual agreement here that is happening and that is why it becomes a bit weaker and later on at the end of the day what do you get you get nothing out of it there's no enforceability so it, it sort of creates a problem right now mediation and arbitration are private confidential in nature and whatever documents you submit and everything is confidential in nature while in litigation is it confidential no it's public right you may go to the court you can see if there is a family matter going on yes you can see if there's a criminal matter going on you can simply witness it yes so you can sit there you can listen to them they can you can listen to the entire story so you would know everything not only that their judgments are also uploaded in the, in the internet right so it's not uh, confidential or private private in nature i would say okay and uh, uh, in mediation and in arbitration mostly the parties can be present they can they are very free to get themselves engaged but in case of arbitration if you see parties can attend the arbitration but participate only and only as witness okay in case of litigation Party again, parties may attend uh, uh, the litigation, the, the the entire trial or any 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 procedure that is going on again as a and uh, as a witness, right? Now talking about laws, which all laws do uh, I mean govern these sectors? Mediation ke liye ADR rules hai, by hai. alternative dispute resolution ka rules hai. That is what is followed, and now the bill has been introduced for creating and creating a separate statute for mediation talking about arbitration as i mentioned multiple times we have arbitration and conciliation act and for litigation we have cpc civil procedure code and crpc criminal procedure code okay that is what is followed so i hope this now the picture is clear to you as to how it is happening mediation is thoda slothy बहुत आराम आराम से वेरी इनफॉर्मल यू नो जैसे घर में दो घर में ठीक करा रहे दो घर के बीच में बिजनेस की इशू हो गई है एंड देन यू नो देयर इज अ मीडिएटर हु इज टॉकिंग टू बोथ द पीपल लिसन आपको क्या चाहिए लिसन व्हाट डू यू वांट है ना प्लीज अग्री टू दिस अमाउंट यू प्लीज अग्री टू दिस अमाउंट दैट इज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन मीडिएशन इन आर्बिट्रेशन इट बिकम्स फॉर्मल you submit your document you submit your document we'll look at the document then we will see what is happening you know and then it mostly goes like a court but it it has an it has an arbitrator right that is uh, appointed by the parties mostly parties uh, appoint the arbitrators and litigation is extremely formal right so this is what uh, this is how the uh, levels go now moving on to the next one it's about one year reservation uh 
there was a reservation uh, system that was uh, proposed in Tamil Nadu wherein 10.5 percent of the uh, internal reservation, internal seats in government jobs and in admissions were given only and only to one year uh, community. Okay, they belong to the OBC, and uh, I mean that is the other uh, backward uh, classes, and they were given such reservation. Now the question arose here. This matter was taken up by the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, "Ki itna reservation to nahi de sakte." Why? Because it violates the right to equality, right? There is no particular objective that has to be achieved through this reservation. If there would have been certain objective, कोई intelligible differentia होता, कोई reasonable classification होता, तो in that case we would have considered it. But we we cannot see anything. Why? Because there is no data that you have provided. There is no data on the basis of which we can gauge as to how much. Uh, uh, what is the socio economic status of this particular community yes so until unless there is no such data how can we say as how can we uh, get to the objective of this reservation yes so that is why it was uh, declared unconstitutional now why is it important why are we studying about this particular uh, legal update iska kya kaam hai hame main kaam ye hai article 40 okay its main uh, objective is actually to read about right to equality how is it happening now let's get into this uh, right to equality has two parts first one is equality before law second one is equal, equal protection of laws equality before law means there is no person who is above law law is going to treat everybody equally law ke liye कोई अमीर कोई गरीब नहीं है लॉ के लिए कोई आदमी कोई औरत नहीं है लॉ के लिए कोई अंबानी और कोई रिक्शा नहीं है ओके सो दैट इज व्हाट लॉ इज गोइंग टू ट्रीट एवरीबॉडी इक्वली दैट इज व्हाट राइट टू इक्वालिटी सेक्स सेकंड वन इज इक्वल प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ लॉ मींस लॉ इज गोइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट एवरीबडी इक्वली नो इट इट्स its expansion if you expand the meaning of this it also says that like has to be treated alike means if there are two groups who are unequal in nature and if you are treating both of them equally that is also a violation of right to equality means that you should treat unequal groups unequally usko hum एक जैसा इक्वली ट्रीट नहीं कर सकते हैं एंड दैट इज वाई वी मेक लॉस वी मेक प्रोविशन इन ऑर्डर टू अपलिफ्ट दोज डिसएडवांटेज सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी यस सो दीज आर द टू फेस ऑफ द राइट टू इक्वालिटी अभी मेन ये तो समझ में आ गया अभी अंडरस्टूड व्हाट इज राइट टू इक्वालिटी बट द मेन मुद्दा हियर वॉज वन ईयर कम्युनिटी को क्यों अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बोला वाई डिट वी डिक्लेयर reservation to one year community unconstitutional that is the main mudda here now that is because of the reasonable classification test there is a there is this test that is conducted in order to understand whether article 14 is being violated in this case or not how do we decide that we have two things first one is intelligible differentia means do we see any differentiation based on the reasons koi reason hai kya dono ko classify karne ka there would be two groups one year and non one year groups you are differentiating both of them right you are discriminating both of them so these are the two groups uh, do you have any reason for this first that is the first test second is about the rational relation means you made the law to give certain reservation to one year group now there would be certain objective that has to be achieved right and uh, is the objective of what is objective of the act having the nexus means having the relation with the basis of the classification that you are giving you have a basis of classification right there would be a basis of classification and there would be an objective of act are the are they both having any nexus any relation if they are not having any relation reasonable classification test fails 
okay apart from that there should be certain rational relation between the object and the object that ha that is being sought by uh, uh, by uh, the act and that is that has to be achieved okay wo ek again ek rational relation hona chahiye dono ke beech mein if there is no such relation that is reasonable in nature that is rational in nature reasonable classification test fails now why why are we studying about it because article 14 becomes very important reasonable classification test is also very important you need not get into a depth of it okay this much information is more than enough for you all right and uh, it's just that you must be aware of these small small words and important keywords so that when if you just in case if you are hit by these words in the examination okay at least you are not surprised by it at least you are able to comprehend it okay and that is why it is it is uh, sort of important now the next update is about uh, an amendment that, uh, that is being proposed in uh, uh, with regard to the crpc in the parliament now what does the amendment say amendment simply says it talks about the biometric data so far now it it shows how are we shifting towards technology right how the entire procedure is shifting due to technology or maybe with regard to technology whatever we can see right previously we did not have biometric we, we did not uh, 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 we, we were not very much into biometric data biometric data matlab mere fingerprint you know uh, retina retina scans or any biological sa samples blood group and all of that it can be anything or any behavioral uh, characteristics it can be anything right so all of these data all of them have to be stored for 75 years okay pehli baat to police police will have uh, the investigators will have the right to obtain these biometric data that is first and secondly all these record has to be kept for 75 years okay so these are the very important uh, 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 updates with regard to crpc as well okay apart from that last one for today is with regard to income tax amendment act so there is an amendment um, in, in in income tax uh, that has come see what is the amendment that is not our that is not important what is mostly important here is with regard to the retrospective taxation retrospective means law has been made today but it is going to be implemented from a date before okay that is what is retrospective uh, taxation basically taxation means a tax would be imposed from a previous date okay otherwise what what do we follow usually that whenever the law is made whenever you are acting suppose today i commit any of crime okay if there is no law with regard to that crime being an offense or say that action being an offense i would say in that case that would not be an offense under law right suppose such law comes tomorrow i committed it today itself i would not be held responsible i won't be liable but if law says that it is going to be followed retrospectively means from day before in that case i'll be held liable so that is what is happening in it amendment act also so basically what are they doing uh, why did why did they give retrospective mostly see when it comes to retrospective implementation uh, it is not very much encouraged in india not just in india most of the legal system it would not be encouraged you know because it becomes a bit unfair mujhe pata hi nahi tha ki ye illegal hai ya fir offense hai ya nahi and i did it into an impression that it may be legal or it may be valid maine to ye soch ke kiya but later on it was uh, declared by the court or maybe law came up with a the additional amendment or maybe provision that uh, it is going to be an offense i did not know when i was doing it so that is why retrospective ko zyada uh, follow nahi karte hain hum matlab we don't usually bring this retrospective implementation in our system so whenever any law is bringing retrospective thing no it becomes uh, thoda important why because retrospective karna pada it means it has a solid reasoning to it so what was the reasoning here there was a lot of taxation policies that were being uh, misused because of the loophole that it had so there were people who were deviating their taxes right and that is why retrospective taxation took place okay 
Now, there are a uh, few concepts here that you need to know that is cess and surcharge, right? So cess means tax on tax, means the tax you're paying, there would be a tax that would be imposed on that. And it would always have a purpose to it. It may be for education, it may be for sanitation, it can be anything. Okay, so for now, there is this 4% uh, tax that is being imposed for education cess, right? So that is cess. Apart from that, there is a another term, there is a, another concept of surcharge. Surcharge, again, it is also uh, like tax on tax, but only and only when your income is more than 50 lakhs. Means it is only for that group of people who are earning more than 50 lakhs. Okay, so for them, surcharge is uh, imposed. Now, for surcharge, there is no specific uh, reason there is no specific objective there is no specific use to it okay it can be anything uh, it can be changed anytime and uh, there is no fixed percentage also percentage be very karta rehta hai according to uh, the system whatever they feel whatever they deem fit they they come up with the percentage okay so yes that is it for for this and if you want to read more about retrospective taxation uh, you can go through certain judgments like vodafone tax case is one of the very most important uh, uh, judgment for this and Kiran energy case also this is only for uh, satiating your urge your curiosity okay it is not very important for clat so please keep this in mind so yes that is it for today's session i hope it helped and uh, Please do keep revising these uh, legal updates. Go through the previous legal updates also. And if you have any doubts, if you have any questions, please put it on the comment box. And uh, just in case if you want me to cover any other legal update, any, any such update, please mention that also. And I'll definitely try to take that up. And uh, yes, please subscribe to this channel so that when I come for the next session, you get the update. You get the notification on your uh, maybe from mobile phone or maybe in your laptop or whatever system you are using. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody. All the very best. Take care of yourself.